cares? It's preseason hockey. Who cares? Me. I care. A lot. You can see every pore on my face. Alright, the Leafs are about halfway through their preseason schedule. I don't like making LFR videos for every single preseason game. I think that's ridiculous, but since we're at the halfway mark, let's do it. The first thing I want to talk about is the NHL players, and let me be clear by what I mean by that. The NHL players are the guys who are locks. They were on the NHL team, they are on the NHL team, and they will be on the NHL team. Matthews with Nylander and Hyman, I have no notes. They look great. I got to see them at that game at Rico Coliseum, and they were fantastic. They were overwhelming the Sabres. Granted, the Sabres didn't really have an NHL lineup, but they looked excellent. I just wanted them to bury more of their chances. There, there were plenty of them. Komarov flying out there. Kadri. Marlow looks fine on that line. Looks fine on the power play. There's another guy who's getting plenty of chances and just not quite burying them. Except for that one snipe in the first game. Oh my god! Like, it's Patrick Marlow. He's got over 500 NHL goals. It's not about him making the team, obviously, just signing that giant deal. It's just about him fitting in with the guys. And I think... They're figuring it out. It's just going to come down to a little bit of timing. He's a new guy, so he might start a little slow. JVR, Bozak, Marner, they're doing exactly what they should be doing in the preseason. They have overwhelming skill, overwhelming offense. They can just beat teams with brute force alone. What their challenge is going to be is when they're facing full-strength NHL teams during the regular season, are they going to be able to play both ends of the ice? That was the problem last year. I think with Marner taking another step this year, that, that should hopefully be alleviated. Riley and Haynes. Not looking fantastic together, but again, they're getting used to each other. The skill's obviously there for Riley. That goal at Rico Coliseum was so disrespectful. Hainsey is tremendously boring, and I love that about him. There was one play in particular that I saw live where the Sabres were coming the other way, and oh my goodness, oh, there's one guy back, and oh, it's Ron Hainsey. Look, you don't want to get caught pinching. You don't want to give the other team odd man rushes, but... It's nice to have that one guy who's going to hang back and let Morgan Riley do dirty things like Morgan Riley is capable of. Gardner Zaitsev looks fine. Uh, Zaitsev's still getting his feet under him. Jake Gardner, though, maybe more than any other Leaf in this preseason, is toying with his food. We've never really questioned the skill set of Jake Gardner. It's always kind of been his decision-making plays between the ears. But wow, is he just making everyone out there look like an ECHL player. Incredible poise with the puck, maybe too much because... When it gets to the NHL regular season, I don't know if he's going to be able to have that much time. The way he skates backwards, forwards, he's just incredible. Freddie Anderson looks fine. His shoulder's not busted this time. Mike Babcock keeps emphasizing, oh, well, he's actually in shape this camp. I don't, I don't really get that. I feel like part of the reason why he might have been out of shape last camp was that he was injured. But while everyone was freaking out about the Leafs losing their first two games, and believe me, it was a little concerning, the NHL guys look fine. I'm not worried about them. The guys I am worried about are the fringe guys the guys who are trying to make the team. Let's talk about them. I've heard a lot of people say, oh, well, there's really only one spot available on the team. I disagree with that, man. I think there's like three. And I think if you were to ask the Leafs in the locker room, they'd probably say three too. And I think if you were to ask the Leafs in the locker room, they would say three as well. Fourth line center seems wide open. They're going to carry a spare winger. They might not even play in the opening night lineup, but they'll get paid an NHL salary. So there's number two. Bottom pair left D for sure. Maybe even bottom pair right D. So it's likely three, possibly even four. After the Leafs 3-1 win in Buffalo last night, which by the way, Buffalo should have dominated that game. They had way more NHL players in the home and home. I don't know how they lost. After that game, Babcock said that the fourth line center slot is as clear as mud. Well, you know, Alts and Moore and Fairzy, they all had great games and they made the situation clear as mud. So let me ask you something. Based on what you've seen so far, who should the Leafs fourth line center be? Should it be Dominic Moore, like everyone? Everyone probably assumed two weeks ago. Should it be Eric Fair, who everyone kind of forgot was even on the Leafs? Or should it be Miro Altinen, who everyone seemed to have forgotten that the Leafs signed? If it was strictly based on preseason play, which it's very not, but if it was, I'd put Miro Altinen as the lead guy. Eric Fair maybe even as the second guy, and Moore dead last. Moore really struggled with that whole face-off thing in the first game, but again, that was the first game and everyone seemed to struggle with it. Bozak shouldn't even make the Marlies if that's the case. But then even with the slashing and the stick infractions, Moore was really struggling taking penalties. Eric Fair's a leader out there, he's a big body, and he was kind of using that throughout the preseason so far, but I don't know if he's dominant enough to be a fourth line. But in the same way that Moore is brand new to this team, Eric Fair essentially is too. He played 
played one game, broke his finger, was never seen again. So he still only played like half a dozen games of hockey since like February. And then there's Miro Altonen who is completely getting used to North America altogether. But when I watch him play, especially at Rico, that's a guy who actually drives the play. He's holding the puck, he's skating with the puck, he's cutting guys off, he's got incredible speed. Mike Babcock wants him to learn defense and I think when he does, that's it. He's the fourth line guy. I think that is the long term goal. Now here's the problem. One, is a small speedy guy the kind of guy that you want to be your fourth line center? Or do you want a big dude like Eric Ferrer or an experienced dude like Dominic Moore? And the other mistake that we as fans can make, and even teams can make at times, is basing their opinions on like two or three exhibition games. Yes, Miro Altonen has looked good in the, what, two preseason games that we've seen him in? Dominic Moore has played 847 NHL games, including another 99 in the playoffs. Eric Fair, who is one of the older guys in the team, but is a full five years younger than Dominic Moore, has played in 562 NHL games, including another 60 in the playoffs. When you have guys like that, you don't have them for what they are in the preseason. You have them for their track record. So when Babcock says that situation is as clear as mud, I believe him. I think my ideal situation would be Altonen ends up getting the majority of the fourth line center starts, but the team also carries Dominic Moore. He can be a leader, and they can put him in for certain games. But if you really believe in Alton in long term, wouldn't you rather him develop, get in more games, send him down to the AHL? So then Dominic Moore is probably your fourth line center, but then do you carry Eric Fair as a spare? Because that's a two million dollar spare. This is a team where the old guys really have to impress. Because you can lose your job to an Altman, you can lose your job to a Kapanen, you can lose your job to a Dermot Rosen or Borgman, any of the three. What may be certain players saving grace, and that might apply to Dominic Moore and or Eric Fair, is the fact that a guy like Altonen can be sent down. Also worth noting that in terms of cap implications, Altonen is not necessarily the cheapest. If you simply look at cap hit, Altonen makes 925, Moore makes 1 million, Fair makes 2. But if Miro Altonen makes all his performance bonuses, he actually makes 1.775. The other side of that is if Altonen makes his performance bonuses, great, pay him! It's like last year, oh, Matthews hit all his performance bonuses, great, it's wonderful, that's why they made the playoffs! If you make your performance bonus, that's because you played well and deserve it, congrats! Now that spare winger that I mentioned, you might have noticed that when I talked about all the regular NHL players, I didn't even mention Matt Martin or Connor Brown. I've actually liked Matt Martin in this preseason. I thought he's been good. His positioning's been good. He's opened up for a few opportunities, but he's come nowhere near burying any of them. Connor Brown just looks like Connor Brown. Like, I know he scored 20 goals last year, but he's just kind of a steady guy, plays responsibly. He's great. Both those guys are probably going to be in the opening night lineup, so who's going to be the guy that they hold? The very, very obvious answer seems to be Josh Levo. They did it to him last year. He He's cheap, you barely notice him on the cap, and if you have to play him, you know he can put the puck in the net. Yeah, I want Kasperi Kapanen to make the team too. Where? Before you say where Matt Martin is, remember, that's just not going to happen. But wouldn't it be great if- it would be great, but they're not going to do that, so. Yeah, but who's going to protect the players? Look, I'm not trying to start a debate here, I'm just saying wouldn't it be excellent if Kapanen made the team, and he can't. Another guy, like when Babcock just says a name over and over again, you know he's just salivating, he wants that guy on his team. Carl Grundstrom. I think if Mike Babcock had his way, he would ice five or six lines every night and Carl Grundstrom would be on the team. Again, you got 12 spots and a spare. Levo's a little older, you already held him once and he's got to clear waivers. Put him in the spare slot. Kapanen, you can send him down and develop him. Great. Grundstrom, you can send him down and develop him. Great. Doesn't it seem like a simple solution? And if a player gets hurt, like they probably will, unlike the alien season that they had last year where they had nine perfect seasons, Nylander only missed one game, so basically ten perfect seasons, it's not going to happen again. You're going to be able to use the Marlies. A Kapanen, a Grundstrom, I haven't even mentioned Andreas Janssen, who I thought has just been another steady guy. Not as flashy as some of the others in this preseason, but He's just a good player. God, I haven't even mentioned Soshnikov. There's another guy, like, he's gonna get sent down. Unless, and a few of you have probably already picked up on this, Steve, they're allowed to carry three spares. That's fair, but in a world where you can send Sosh down and have to wave fair, maybe they keep fair. Fair to me is a very underrated part of the whole Leaf scheme. I don't know if they really want him. I don't know if he's gonna make the team. I don't know if he's gonna get buried, if he's gonna get put on waivers. I, I don't know. Him more than almost any other player, I'm fascinated to see what they do with. Which brings me to Martin Marinson. Oh, Martin, oh. Now a lot of people have been going, oh, the course he got Martin Marinson. He looks real good out there, doesn't he? He sucks. And a lot of people have been going, 
Well, actually... Look, the both of you, shut up, okay? I have some thoughts. Look, Martin Marinson does a bunch of things really, really well. In the words of Mike Babcock, he's six foot five or whatever he is every time he steps on the ice. His possession numbers are typically good. Getting into even more micro stats, his prevention of zone entries is extremely good. He's a very good player at that. When the puck is on his stick, it's like spinning a wheel and just seeing where it goes. Now, on a team that is known for its offense and uses its speed and skill, is it worth it to keep a player back there who handles the puck like a grenade? He's got little to no offensive game and he's in the fight of his life for a spot on this team and he's just been blowing it with giveaways and penalties. Even though one of the penalties last night against the Sabres in the fourth game was a phantom call. And he makes $1.25 million. Do the Leafs have a cheaper option who might also be better? There's 20-year-old Travis Dermott, cap hit of $863,000. Does he have any bonuses? No. He's got poise beyond his years for sure, but what impresses me the most about him are his feet. He's so fast. And he has the benefit of playing professional hockey in North America and playing here for all his life. Then there's 22-year-old Andreas Borgman, a $925,000 cap hit, but like Miro Altonen, if he hits all his bonuses, 1.775. Maybe a little bit more chaotic than Dermot, but definitely has a nastier streak too. He's a feisty, annoying player with some offensive flair too. And then the player who I think is actually going to make this team, Callie Rosen. Steve, you literally tweeted that Andreas Borgman is going to make the team like yesterday morning. I know, and then I saw Rosen play a second game and I'm confused. He's 23, he's going to turn 24 mid-season. He's got the same contract as Borgman, 925. If he hits everything, 1.775. He's a full player, man. Guy can skate. He's pretty responsible on his own end, or at least he seems like he's improving at that. He's got some offense to him as well. He's a little bit older. I think this is the guy who's going to win the spot. And I also think about it, like, there was a bit of a sweepstakes for Rosen, right? If the Leafs have Riley there and Gardner there, and then Dermott's there and looks like he's about to succeed, Rosen's going to look around and go, oh, I chose wrong. I think Borgman will probably end up being a better player than Rosen in the long run. I'm just so impressed by the fact that he was the Rookie of the Year in the SHL. That tends to be a pretty good indicator of talent. Dermot looks like he's going to be sick. I think you put both those guys down in the American Hockey League, develop them for another year, and then we see what happens. And then Timothy Lilligren comes into the equation, and oh, I love depth! That's another thing. We got really excited about Lilligren. He's not going to make this team, guys. Might make the Marlies, might keep him in North America. That might be good, but I, you just need to develop the guy. If, if he's going to be as good as people hope he's going to be, you got to do it properly. Don't rush him. So three big questions here. Who out of the three of Dermot, Borgman, and Rosen do you think is most likely to make the team? Has Martin Marinson lost his spot on the team, or at very least in the top six, do you think he'll maybe be carried as a spare? Three, what have you thought of Connor Carrick? Because I haven't been as impressed as I hoped I would be in this preseason. But I'm still firmly planted into that hill I plan on dying on that Carrick is going to be something in this league. And four, I'll just throw it in there because screw you, it's my video. Polak. Is he, is he gonna get signed? I genuinely think Babcock would like to, but if you listen to everything being said about him medically, I don't think it's gonna happen, man. And one final thing, the goalies. Anderson looks good, big surprise. Sparks, other than a shaky start in relief in the first game, I, I think has looked very good. McElhaney was in a abomination in the first game and then good in the second. And Kaski Suo has been very good as well. To me, McElhaney is the obvious backup unless he really gives the Leafs a reason to consider not letting him do that again. And I say again because the first game was definitely that. McElhaney is going to be the Leafs backup. He's here for two years and he's much older. Sparks may or may not even be better, but he's younger, he's faced some injuries, he needs to play a few games. I've seen a few people say, oh, Kaski Suo might be the backup. That's ridiculous. I really hope the Leafs don't do that. I think he might be something one day, but he spent the majority of last season in the ECHL. He barely played in the AHL, and it's not like he was over the top incredible. He was good. Let him continue to prove that. So, whew, that was longer than I thought it would be, which is pretty much just what this channel should be called at this point. Question of the F four games. Who among the locked-in NHL players has impressed you the most? Who among the locked-in NHL players has concerned you the most? Who among the fringe guys has impressed you the most? And who do you think is going to end up playing themselves off of this team? That goes for wingers, centers, defenders, and even goalies. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing what you have to say. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends. And four preseason games left. Is this too long? Bring on the regular season!